Hey Bobcats, 6th grade Bobcats, welcome back to another great week at the Helena Middle School. Um, hopefully you guys are awesome, doing awesome on the reading challenges. Um, reading is such an important component of life and learning and education. Shout out to Ms. Vedavati, shout out to Ms. Hunthausen. Um, hope you guys are doing well with that. This week I'm going to continue talking about friendships and how friendships evolve over time and how as you get to know who you are better, your friendships are going to change and how that can be an exciting thing and that more than anything is a normal thing. If you think about coming from grade school here at HMS, hopefully you have some new friends. Hopefully you held on to some old friends and your friendship circle is expanding. And as you go from middle school, later in middle school to high school, you're going to see that your friendships are going to continue to evolve and change. And I tried to make a metaphor as you move further out from the middle of the dartboard, your friendship circle becomes more defined, refined, and specific. And that's a natural, normal thing. So let's get rock and roll on this Bob lesson. Hope you guys like it. Friendship Bart Dor Dart did, 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 did. Part Two. Here we go. All right. This week's Bob lesson is titled Friendship Dartboard Part Two. Don't confuse. Get confused. It's going to be a little different variation from last week. All right. But first, let's be our best this week at HMS. Let's be safe. Let's be responsible. Let's be respectful, and let's be a learner. All right, before we get going on Friendship Dartboard, I want to uh, do, a, do a little intro with this guy here on my left. His name was Eric Erickson. Eric Erickson was a famous psychologist that developed um, psychosocial development. And he basically said that every life stage you go through in life, that life was broken up into different life stages. And the life stage that is roughly your guys' age and continues till you're 19 is called identity versus role confusion or answering the question, who am I? And he basically stated that from age roughly 12 to 19, the major thing going on with human beings and their development is answering that question. Who am I? Where do I fit in? Where am I going in life? What are my interests? What are my strengths? What drives and motivates me? How am I unique from other people? And I think we go through in life and we're always answering these questions, but I think we're really growing and changing at a more rapid rate when when people are your guys' age, through age 19. And many of you are probably sitting listening to that right now saying, yeah, that is me. You know, as you come through elementary school, well, you're not really that much different from other people. Um, you all wear kind of the same clothes and act roughly the same way. It's not until you hit middle school where people really start changing and becoming who they are. And the reason I want to talk about this is because of this picture that I shared with you guys last week. Remember this picture right here? Surround yourself with those on the same mission as you. Well, what does this picture and the last picture of Eric Erickson have to do with each other? Well, simply, if you don't know who you are and you don't know what you're about and you're trying to figure these things out, your friendship group is also going to change at the same time. Remember, um, I really encourage you guys to surround yourself with a friendship group of people that are going to build you up and that are going to support you and that have common goals and common values and common interests. Well, if you're constantly trying to figure that out from age 12 to 19, your friendship group is probably going to change along with it. All right, so this brings us back to the friendship dartboard. I talked about the friendship dartboard last week. We talked about friendship dartboard, how there's different layers of friendship. You have your inner circle, the people you trust the most, that you confide in the most, that um, you spend the most time with and you put the most energy into. And then you had your intermediate circle, which was the next layer of friendship. Uh, people that you're good friends with, you keep in, in touch with, but you don't maybe put the most effort and energy into. And then your outer circle, which is where most people would fall. And you, you put the least amount of effort into it. You're still friends. You might not consider people good friends. Well, you'll see my dartboard here. I, 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 I'm not a great artist. This has been established. Mr. Flato is not a great artist. That's okay. I have other strengths and maybe artistic ability is one of my weaknesses. But um, we're going to be going over a new dartboard theory today where we're going to talk about subgrouping and friendships and who we choose to be in our friendship group and how we go on a similar path and we're different from other people. So um, I'm going to put some color on this here in a little bit and we're going to get rid of the dartboard on the left and focus on the one on the right. All right, so I've taken this dartboard, put a black background behind it and put some color to it. And the color is going to, well, the whole dartboard is going to represent maybe a community or a society, or in this case, maybe Helena Middle School. And you'll notice that on this dartboard, um, I've got some different colors. In the upper right, I've got an orange. On the right, I've got a blue. 
On the bottom right, I've got a yellow. On the bottom left, I've got a white or a silver. Um, on the left, I've got a darker blue. And on the upper left, I've got a green. And what these colors really represent is different subgrouping or different friendship groups that we may have here in this school. Now, I know I only have one, two, three, four, five, six different colors because I could only do so many colors. But maybe in a school like ours, maybe, maybe we have 25, 30, 40... 50 circles when you when you look around the lunchroom you see different groups of people sitting together every day and it's a na it's a natural thing to gravitate towards certain people when it comes to making friendships we talked about the dartboard from last week and our friendship groups well this is a natural thing um, a matter of fact in the counseling world we call this subgrouping and these are the people that within the group that we choose to spend and hang out and spend our time with um, we spoke before about people who are probably in your subgroup or your friendship circle these are people that you share similar beliefs with. These are people that share similar interests as you. These are people that share similar values as you. These are people that you just relate to. You just happen to relate to one another. And these are people that share similar goals as you. When we talk about the lions, you know, um, surround yourself with people in the same, same um, that have the same vision and the same goals as you and that are on the same mission as you. And this is what friendship groups are, are really about. Now, Let's pretend that you're 11 to 14 years old when you are starting to explore who you are and, and who is in your friendship group. And let's pretend that, um, that you choose to be a certain color. Maybe my upper right, and I'm just making this up on the fly, are, are athletes, people that like sports. Maybe um, far right are, are people that are my gamers, my blue. Maybe my yellow are people that are into dance and ballet. Uh, maybe my white are people that are just really into school and academics. Maybe my per people on the left in the blue are people that are my thespians that are, um, that are into to, to drama and acting. And maybe my upper left are um, people that are into music. Um, and I'm just making this up. Well, you get to be 11 to 14 years old and you realize, you know, I hang with certain people and, and we kind of stick together. And and let's pretend now that that being um, being 11 to 14 years old, you're closer to the, the bullseye. Maybe you are, ooh, I got my thing here. Let's pretend that I'm in this, this athlete group and maybe right here is 11 to 14 years old. Um, notice how you can be in this red category or this orange category right here. Um, but still be in a different lane, a dartboard lane from other people. Uh, maybe these are my athletes right here, and maybe um, S S Joe is here, and Sally is here, and Robert is here, and Melissa is here, and Bethany is here, and Calvin is right here. And we all consider ourselves athletes, but at the same time, um, we're still our own people. And this means that it is normal to be in a friendship group and still be our own person. That means within our friendship groups, um, we can be our own people, have our own thoughts and ideas, and be still be our own unique individuals. You'll also notice that as you get older, you may remain in the red, or maybe you end up over in the green or the blue. And the thing I want you guys to know is that's normal too. Maybe you start out where sports are really important to you, and then maybe you get into music, or maybe you get into to thespians and drama or gaming or or dance, or whatever it is, um, as your interests start to change and you start to answer that question, who am I, um, your friendship group, or where you're at on the dartboard, may change too. And the, the most important thing I want you guys to know is that is a normal thing. Now, let's pretend by the time you're in high school, you're still in the red, and you're outside and further away from the bullseye. You'll also notice that you're further away from other reds because you're continuing to become your own unique person. So let's pretend that um, as a middle schooler you were in red and you started here and maybe your best friend was over here. Um, so you started here, if you can see on my arrow, and your best friend started here. Well, let's pretend that as you get into high school, now all of a sudden you're still in the red and maybe you're way over far left on your red. And maybe your best friend is over here still in the red. Well, you'll notice that this distance is further away than this distance. And what that really means is you can still be friends in your, with people in your subgroup and um, you can still be true to who you are and you and your friends are, are still in the same friendship group but you're, you're becoming your own people and you guys are growing and you're becoming different. And I want you to know that that's an exciting thing. And the reason that I did this lesson and the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because so many times I talked to sixth grade students who were friends with somebody in, in, in elementary school and now that they're in 
uh, middle school, they become friends with other people, and maybe they grow apart from some people. Or maybe I talk to eighth grade students who used to be really good friends with so and so, and and just over the years they've they've changed, and that other person has changed, and they are now um, better friends with with other people that they didn't used to be friends with. And as you get into high school, and as you get into um, post high school, you're going to continue this. I think. My inner circle, going back to last week's dartboard, the people that are in my inner circle weren't even on my dartboard period when I was in middle school or high school because I hadn't met them yet. Now all the people in my inner circle or all the people in my my color zone here are people that are uh, basketball officials or, or coaches or in education, and those are the people that I that I hang out with, and, and that's a normal thing. And some of the people that used to be um, maybe in my color realm or maybe that I was really tight with um, when I was in middle school or high school, I don't really keep in touch with anymore. And that's okay. That's that's a normal thing, of p- normal part of growing up. So what are our takeaways? Let's review what we're talking about today. You are in the midst of rapid growth and self-discovery from ages 12 to 19 years old. And for many of you, this is just starting and it's a little uncomfortable and I want you to know that that's okay. That's normal. And this is going to cause your friendship circle to grow, evolve, and change. And having a changing and evolving friendship circle is a normal thing. Choose friends that build you up, encourage you, and help you reach your goals and your dreams. Um, And this this picture right here of these lions, another picture of lions, um, says basically the same thing. Keep people in your life that truly love you, motivate you, encourage you, inspire you, enhance you in your life, and make you happy. All right, and we are now on to the quote of the week. And the quote of the week is, it happens to everyone as they grow up. And this is kind of what this Bob lesson is about. You found out who you are and what you want, and then you realize that people you've known forever don't see things the way you do. So you keep the wonderful memories, but you find yourself moving on and making new friendships and... um, and making new friendships with people that share your same vision, share your same goals, um, find interest in the same things in life, so on and so forth. And that brings us to this week's Jellybean Question of the Week winners, who are Jason Mandy, Robert Birmingham, Alex Bullock, Sidney Floyd, Juan McDonald, and Devin Elliott. Congratulations, the answer was I. This week's Jellybean Question of the Week is, what number do you get when you multiply all of the numbers on a telephone's number pad together? If you think you know, get your answer into the Bob Box by Friday. All right, Bobcats, let's go out and make it a great week before spring break at the Helena Middle School.